Introduction Thank you and congratulations on taking this class. Professional Scrum Master Training and PSM-1 Exam Preparation. In this class, you'll be given a multitude of information and proven tips to help you pass the Scrum.org Professional Scrum Master PSM-1 Exam. I know you'll get value from this class, as its information has been successfully used by many students in order to pass the PSM-1 exam. I'll walk you step-by-step step through Agile Scrum so that you have an excellent foundation. Following the explanation of each concept, I give you tips for passing the PSM-1 exam and even for using Scrum in your team or business. Along the way, I give you plenty of examples. And finally, I give you the links you can use to sit the practice open assessment. This is the official practice exam from Scrum.org. In this class, you'll learn Concise Overview of Scrum The exact events, roles, rules, and artifacts used to deliver a project using Scrum, along with the history of Scrum. This includes lectures on the fundamentals of sprint planning, the daily Scrum, sprint review, sprint retrospective, Scrum artifacts, and more. The facts based on the Scrum Guide the correct terminology and use of Scrum is essential to mastering it. The Scrum Guide is the rule book on Scrum, and many do not use it or know it. Scrum Certification Coaching A summary of frequently asked questions, FAQs, and frequently misunderstood points around Scrum that have been in past open assessment exams. Scrum Certification Preparation I tell you how to prepare for Scrum certification and how to set it online, saving you hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars. So let's get started and let me help you pass the Scrum.org Professional Scrum Master PSM-1 exam. Section 2. Introducing Scrum In Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland's, two of the original founders of Scrum, Scrum Guide, they describe Scrum as a framework for developing and sustaining complex products. Scrum consists of self-organizing, cross-functional teams. Simply put, this means that the teams consist of a group of people who each have different areas of expertise, but work together for the same outcome. A project manager does not control them, since their expertise empowers them to make decisions collectively. The teams work in iterations, which allows the business the flexibility to change their requirements, but still gives the development team the certainty it needs to deliver a working piece of the product. This is one key thing that makes Scrum powerful. Scrum takes its name from the analogy to rugby, where a team worked together in a chaotic environment to keep control of a ball. This can be compared to a team working together in a chaotic environment to keep control of a project. Scrum Theory History repeats itself, unless you do something about it. Scrum is based on empirical process control theory. The idea is very simple, so don't let the name worry you. It consists of three principles, transparency, inspection, and adaptation. The idea is that the Scrum team agree to be transparent, honest, in all that they do on the project. Being transparent means that functionality is not done until it meets the development team's definition of done. Transparency builds trust between the team members. Once the team has agreed on transparency, they agree to consistently check up on progress, inspection, and make improvements based on what they've seen, adaptation. These can be improvements in practices, sticking to values, communication, or otherwise. This is powerful stuff in industry, the ability to consistently inspect and adapt. In that way, they're improving time and time again, before, during, and after the release of a product. This is something that was not possible with the waterfall method.